Hi, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Now today is the first day building the new 135th scale Austin K2Y or KT Ambulance from FX. I'll make a start on the chassis and the cab and just see how far I get today. Um, there's a lot of gluing, letting it dry, bits of paint, letting the paint dry, da, 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 all that sort of stuff. But I'm sure we'll make quite a lot of progress today. Uh, if you enjoy the video, and I hope you do, please remember Imperial thumbs up by clicking the like button down there. And if you haven't done so already, though, Lord knows why, please do remember to subscribe to my channel. Helps me enormously, doesn't cost you a penny. And of course, if you want to uh, support the channel in more concrete ways, there's a whole raft of ways you can do that through Super Thanks or any of the partner channels in the information box below. So, if you uh, just want to see what's inside the box, you're thinking of maybe buying one of these, just want to see what you get for your money, then there is a companion box opening video already on the channel. That's probably the best to look through first. Then come back if you want to see how to actually put the thing together. Let's get on then and make a start building our 135th scale K2Y or KT ambulance from Airfix. One small piece of preparation I have to do, uh, I've primed everything, already given it sort of a gentle coat of primer. One thing I have to do is take this badge off because on the KT in Ice Cold in Alex, the badge was missing. So I'm going to take that off, just sand it down a little bit, and then that will be ready to spray. Now, Ethic suggests a colour, I think it's pale linen or something like that for this kit. But this is the right colour, it's the British Standard Portland Stone in Vallejo Air, it's 71288. The first thing to do is to assemble the chassis. The five cross members are here, the two side rails are here. Um, the only thing it says is this centre cross member here. You can see there's a little square detail at the end there. They say make sure that's on this side. Other than that, just lost it all together. So there we go, that's all the cross members in. Now this last one is a bit of a pain because it hangs down. I think it, a structural cross member goes across the um, transmission box or something like that. But it just raises up the front end, which is a bit of a pain, but there we go. All done. Now, now these bits here are the crucial ones. Hit this one and this one, because if we've turned them over, you can see perhaps if I pick it up you can see they've got these flanges here and here that help set these parts vertically so those are important this is important because it sets the space at the front this is obviously just a space of front and back okay now this little sprue mark here um, either you can cut that off with a very 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 sharp uh, modeling knife pointy modeling knife if you've got one or if you don't want to do that, you can do what I do, which is use a sanding stick, which I make my own mini, mini sanding sticks out of essentially a flat toothpick. You've got in a Chinese uh, s supermarket somewhere, box of them. And um, I use them as stirrers and things like that. But really useful, really thin strip of sandpaper. I think about 320 grade I normally use. And it becomes a really thin sanding stick. So you can get between those shackles and sand down the moulding mark. Amazing. It takes a little bit of time obviously, but it will do it. There you go. So whenever you've got a moulding mark between two big things that you don't want to disturb, make yourself a micro sanding stick or two. And the springs just sit into these slots on the side of the rear structure like so next in is this piece which I'm assuming represents the bottom of the engine since so we haven't got an engine in this kit and it just sits on that cross member and like that and then just tacks up to the front there. There is a little tab right in this very front cross member. You want to make sure 
there's a hole for a tab I should say there's a slot you really should make sure that's clear so what you do is make sure that this is in the middle and then exactly on those um, support beams at that cross member let's take it back there we go then the front's going to be in the right place now the rear differential goes together that just sort of slots on and is glued in place next the rear axle mounts go on onto the back of these springs like that and this is a, a little sort of exhaust mounting that needs to go in here Okay, that's going to support the exhaust. Um, actually, it's the silencer it's going to support right there. Next, we have to put in the um, drive shaft. So we, what we're going to do is connect connect the drive shaft to the diff first. That's like that then it goes into the back of the drive there and it sits on there like that yep that's right so then the front springs can go on like so they they sit in these little slots there like that The square bit goes at the front, the triangular bit at the back. Yep, on the mountings. Next in is the exhaust. It goes in at the front end here. Clips into these posts here and here. That's why it was important to get this, um, this brace here the right way around. So that the... Uh, exhaust mounting is in the right place and then finally the final exhaust goes into there and into there and there we go exhaust is on now it all looks the same colour at the moment so what I'm going to do is when um, when I've finished all of this underside it'll get a proper coat over of uh, Portland again but the exhaust is going to be um, sort of steel or something like that and then we'll also make it a bit grubby and a bit rusty as well. And then there's the main front cross member goes into place like so. There we go. Right, we have to make the uh, fuel tanks now. Uh, these are just very simple box construction. There we go. So, what we have to make sure is that the these mounting lugs here, which go onto the chassis, are opposite the uh, slot where the filler goes. Yeah, that's all we need to worry about there. Then we place the fuel tanks on either side in their little holes. So and like so. There we go. And that is essentially the chassis complete. Um, there's no engine to worry about. Um, so what we're going to do is going to let all that dry and set up, then we'll give it another coat of Portland stone. We'll paint the um, exhaust a nice steel colour and then do some sort of rusting and messing around there um, make the uh, spring stand out a bit more maybe do a little bit of weathering on it and then that will be that and wait for the cab assembly to be done before we put any tyres or anything like that on First thing I'm going to do is just undercoat this uh, driver's area with some aluminium. 
Now what I'm doing that for is that I'm going to be respraying this whole front end with um, Portland stone again. So if I have this underneath it, then I can sort of rub bits off to make it look like it's been used quite a lot. You know how if you don't have uh, mats in your car for ages, and you, you know the carpet wears down. Yeah, well this didn't have carpet to begin with, so the paint will wear off. That's what I think anyway. While well, I'm waiting for that paint to dry, I will, rather than sit there watching it, I will make some tyres and some wheels. Now these just come in simple halves on this kit, they just go together. What we'll then do is put a clamp on them to keep them together and then we'll just go around with some ultra fine, I keep saying ultra fine glue, it's ultra thin glue. There we go, ultra thin, so, so that will glue them together and it'll also slightly weld the seam as well. So it'll be a lot easier to sand down later on. The rear floor of the ambulance is this curious dark brown color. And what I can do now is sand out that top coat of Portland stone. Remember we put down a an undercoat of aluminium here and we can now sand down that top coat just a bit to make it look like it's worn. Let's brush off any bits and pieces. Actually looks pretty damn good I have to say it does look a little bit like the worn base of a very very well used truck. So what we'll do now is um, put some uh, varnish onto the front here and to this then we can mask off and paint these bits and then the base will be done and now I'm going to paint this old exhaust steel um, you know they might well have painted these I, I guess they did paint them but then with the heat coming through I'd have thought the paint would have come off so I'm going to do them like this best bare, bare steel first and then I will later on I'll do a little bit of um, jiggery pokery with some rust and stuff like that rust and dirt and general crud that will accumulate and while I've got this out I am going to start doing the wash on things like the springs and the chassis just to bring up a little bit of the detail that's there um, there we go and I'm also going to make this stuff like mucky later on but this is just the first wash to get some detail into the structure um, that we can then make a little bit sort of worn and whatever later on but we need to see the basic what's underneath first of all now for the stretchers I am just going to brush paint them in uh, khaki I'm brush painting them because the only khaki I've got is in model color not model air and I really cannot be bothered diluting it down for an airbrush when this nice big thick brush will do an even job just as nicely. What I'm going to do now is just add a little bit of sand weathering to these highlights here, these, these bits that are standing up here. Only on the basis of um, you know they're in a desert and things get sandy so put some sand around there and I'll also just put a little wash of sand up here I don't know how these are going to come out by the way I'm just sort of having a play with these washes they may come out a bit too harsh 
or a bit too light I don't know but I'm going to put uh, this sand wash on first and just let that dry off a bit and see where we go with that maybe just dilute it a bit more towards the edges also stipple it in a bit a bit more sort of irregular sort of footsteps dragging stuff in rather than just general muck and see where we go see how that ends up and then we've got some light sand we can have another go at as well um, and you know it, it might work it might not let's have a go so as you see the um, paler sand as it dries is a little harsh so what we'll do is we'll just edge that out a bit and dilute it down a little and um, be quite so harsh then not so bothered about the back here but um, quite often you know we have to do like sort of seven eight nine coats of different uh, weathering systems to make it like look how we want it so, so don't expect it to do everything in the first go do it <coughs> as you see let it dry because when it dries it's very very different and then uh, assess it and see right well do I need to do it again or do I not the key to this of course is varnishing the paint underneath once once the paint underneath is varnished you can pretty much do what you like on top of it because the varnish coat will protect it from any of these water-based washes if um, the paint is just put on there and you don't varnish it then if you mess it up then frankly you've probably messed it up and it's going to be very difficult to pull back so that's why i varnished this earlier on it seems to be drying a bit better but we'll leave it alone and assess it again in a few minutes the other thing I'm going to do while that's drying is put some black into these lines here now what I've done is I've given it a wash in plain water first and the water has tended to stick in the panel lines we would call them on planes I guess they're panel lines here I don't know because I don't know if these are panels or planks or what anyway the uh, these dividing lines here the water sit, tends to sit in them and it tends to pick up the black and just drag it along for you so it really is a, a I won't say zero effort but it's a a low effort way of providing quite a lot of detail now remember again this black will dry quite a lot lighter so don't worry if it looks that obvious at the moment and again we have um, pre varnished this so if we do mess up any big way we can uh, just wipe it up and start again basically and the same on the floor pan here I've just added some water earlier so it'll just follow these lines quite naturally without a massive amount of effort on my part which is always good to know it's always good when something something works without trying too damned hard about it you know what I mean it's it's um sometimes you try really really hard for very little effort so very little result lots of effort for very little result and then sometimes the modeling gods smile on you and say do you know what i'm going to let you do that now and this seems to be one of those occasions touch wood where the lines are just the right depth and there's just enough water for the wash to really do most of the work all 
right, now I've got the um, exhaust painted up I'm just going to dab a little bits of uh, rusting powder around just give it a bit of colour you know it, this thing's going to have been out splashing through the streets of Tobruk you know they do get rain there things leak there, things get knocked over there, things do get wet there and then they just sort of stand around for ages so they are going to get a little bit of rust you know that's just the way life is military or otherwise they will be slightly rusty I'm also going to just um, tweak around the bands here with a bit of rust colour and around the uh, filler caps as well and now back to the stretchers and I'm going to paint the handles with a wooden colour, I think this is mahogany any wooden colour, natural sort of wooden colour will do now, now I'm, I'm hopping backwards and forwards here between like bits and pieces here and bits and pieces there but that's kind of how this works yeah um, especially when you're making videos I have to say you don't just do something and let it be and go make a cup of coffee and sit down and think yeah yeah I did really well that day well done me um, you have to punch on and get things done so uh, I will be jumping backwards and forwards between things as I normally do but that's the nature of making models for videos you don't obviously have to do things in the order in which I do them um, that's a very very important thing you do things in the order in which you're comfortable uh, if you want to do things in strictly in the order of the instructions you won't go wrong it will take you a little bit of time maybe a bit longer waiting for things to dry or set or whatever but you won't go wrong following the instructions I just like to have like a few things on the go at once basically if I can next thing that go in are these rails that support the lower tier of stretchers there's one on each side then the first stretcher can sit in the channel here and there we go there's our first stretcher case in going to put the um, couple of the pedals in here there's only um, two pedals so I'm assuming the brake was entirely the handbrake which is an interesting way of having to drive I guess across a desert actually probably more of a worry driving through Alexandria with only a handbrake to make you stop when someone pulls out in front of you but there we go now there's a couple of pieces to go on the back of the communicating door between the driver and the back is this um, I don't know what it is what is it a map case or something or I don't know some sort of uh, leather thing that sits there and and there's another one that sits here also got to put the uh, window in of course the glazing for the window do that in a second the little window goes in as well just sort of sits in there and you can fix it with uh, white PVA for example or just the tiniest tiniest drop of extra thin cement and don't forget to do all the weathering on all of the inside panels remember you know you're not going to be able to get to these very easily once they're closed 
once once you've done the cab so make sure you get all these like things like these louvre vents and the handles everything else just make sure they're all nicely weathered and nicely picked out with detail wash before we go too far and today's really good news was i found out where decal number three goes and it goes just here on the passenger side of the center console right, putting the door into the frame at the front of the ambulance compartment back of the driver's compartment now i want these very slightly open so i'm going to put these little toothpicks in just to keep them in place while they dry all right now we push this front wall into place trust me this is actually quite stiff even though i've sanded off all the bits i've pre-painted this is hellishly stiff to get into place um I think it's in place. I don't actually know if it's in place or not. Um, I guess by the fact that the floor meets the walls is good enough. But it, it, it's really, really stiff to get that, this piece in. Although, I must say, when it is in place, it looks pretty damn good. I'm really happy with that. There's another piece fits in the floor here. Just slots in like that. Okay, so for the tires, what I've done is I've already painted the insides, the, the rims, and I've run some water around the outside here on the tire. And I'm just gonna let some wash go in and make that distinction for me okay so that's the edge of the rim picked out automatically you don't have to worry about it so what we'll do now is put in some slightly diluted um, tire paint and i'm using a uh, panzer races uh, dark rubber from Vallejo but you can use whatever obviously you can use whatever you like then you don't have to be too close to the edge because the water and the wash will pick up the grey of the tyre now you can do this and let it dry and then the very edge of the tyre is already done you don't need to go back and do that you don't need to go back and worry about not going over the edge because it's already there. You can get pretty close to it and you'll never notice if it doesn't go to the edge because the black wash is in there to fill in the gaps. Okay, so just very, you do still have to be careful. I'm not saying just slap it around, but you know what? That's not bad for a hairy stick. You can and no um, masking, obviously. And then just uh, finish off the tire. That's how I do it. And before you know it, I've already found out what this is for. This is like a little ramp that holds the spare wheel in place. So it stops it rolling around. Yay. Amazing. So we go, spare wheel sits in place against this stop here and on the floor. And it just just clears the door and when the wheels in place there's another sort of uh, restraint I guess it is restraining thing bar there it goes in and we'll give that the same sort of weathering as everything else so it all blends in and then finally for this wall there's this leather headrest needs to go in there we go. Now these leather support, they go underneath the um, the top bank stretchers, I guess they're leather seats. So it would be seats if you were carrying just personnel rather than stretcher cases. 
they get a coat of a kind of leathery colour. Um, this is cavalry brown. Um, what we'll do is we'll give this a nice coat because it goes on really solidly. We'll give this a coat of cavalry brown and then we'll give it a wash of humbrol leather just to sort of bring it up to what might be right. Maybe just like a, a nice wash of it so it it doesn't go completely um, humbrol brown, humbrol leather, but sort of just sort of it takes down the redness of this. I think the red is probably a little too much here. Okay, so now we can put the um, bottom supports on this cot, I guess you'd call it. This thing that supports seating as well as a stretcher above it. We're going to put the cross members on and then the rail goes in. There's little slots for the rail components all the way along. Then on these benches we just need these end pieces to go in. So just sort of block them off, secure them stop the uh, casualties falling off the end, obviously. And there's one at each end. That's important that at this end, which is the door end, it sits underneath the rail. Yeah, otherwise you wouldn't better get the casualty off. Whereas at the other end, of course, it's blocked off, so it stops the um, stretcher going off the end. Okay, so now the leather goes on top of that. And then the stretcher sits on top again. And when it's all done, the upper bunk can slot into the side wall like this. Right now this is um this is a strange thing here because it looks like you have to put the bottom of this on the top of this ridge here then it lines up against there which just seems a really stupid place to way of doing it but you know that's what they seem to be saying. So that's what I'll do. Now what I'll do is also I'm going to use, I've just used like three spots of super glue here. Just as like spot welds. So they should hold this in place. It takes a 10 to 30 seconds to go off because this is a high viscosity super glue so it allows you to move things around before it finally sets and it'll also give a decent grab so I can then when that has, has set down when it has gripped I can get my and back in the room I can get my um, ultra thin cement and then just go along that seam to bind it properly to weld the plastic as it should be. Um, I find super glue absolutely invaluable for things like this. Um, for times when you know I need, need to put something, I don't want to tape it because I've, you know, I've got delicate surfaces here and um, all things that are hidden, I just you know I haven't got as many hands or clamps as I think I should have. And super glue generally does a pretty damned good job of holding things in place until I'm happy. And I've also just seen how strong those lines are, so I'm just gonna soften them up a bit 
Um, just want, don't want them to be quite as strong. Mind you, probably won't see them very much when... Uh, might be a good thing. I'm going to leave them alone. Uh, leave them alone. Go, go, with, go with your gut feeling, Gary. I think they'll be fine. And the base of the driver's seat goes on. And then the driver's seat goes in. And put the gear lever in as well. And there's also the handbrake, or I guess the actual brake. Can't see a brake pedal anywhere. paint those and make them look pretty well that's as far as I've got for day one um, I think we made quite a lot of progress I think looking at the instructions and what's left on the sprues probably day day and a half more and she'll be finished completely then I can make a start on the diorama base which I'm doing so if you've enjoyed today and I hope you have do please remember the Imperial thumbs up by clicking on the like button down there and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already you can do that through that small logo down there in the bottom right corner thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time